On Larry King Now, actresses and podcasters Missy Pow and Constance Zimmer. We want it to be um, obviously successful and we want to be able to give people um, a place where they can, you know, they can come and they can share their stories, they can laugh, they can bitch a little bit. Um, they maybe can learn something, but the idea too is like, how will we be judged by that? You know, because we are putting mm -hmm. ourselves out there. Plus, you have to have a license to drive a car, but you don't have to have mm -hmm. a license no. to be a parent. And they just gave me this pile of flesh that yeah. has a heartbeat, that, and they're like, here, good luck. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Dennis Miller filling in for Larry today. Happy to welcome actresses, podcasters extraordinaire, Constance Zimmer. That's Missy me. Powell. <laughs> Constant recently starred in Lifetime's hit drama, Unreal, which aired its fourth and final season on Hulu. Missy's appeared in more than 100 films, TV shows, including Friends, Mom, Dodgeball, Citizen Kane, Gone Girl, <laughs> Gone with the Wind. This is embarrassing. Citizen Kane was um, rough shoot. It was really rough, rough. shoot. Wells, she was perpetual just a baby. Horn dog. Yeah, he was, I was so. The yeah. two actresses have now come together for their new podcast, The Motherload, where they talk about the stuff you don't learn in parenting books. Which is, <laughs> we're on thirty extra chapters. Trust me, you can find it on all major podcasting platforms. Missy Constance, welcome to the shebang. How are you? We're good. We're good. Yeah, we're good. We're gonna going to try and not year. talk over each other. Well, it's going to be a problem, but we're going to try. Talk in tandem. We talk a lot. Now, it's listen. Fun. Appropriately enough, concerning uh, uh, mothering, the mother load, who birthed this podcast idea? Or in tandem? Well, I had done a podcast with this guy Sim Sarna, who had produced it. He has uh, it's Cloud Ten. He had originally. Um, Produced Anna Ferris's podcast, mm -hmm. oh, that was, uh, and we were both on it. And uh, I did a podcast with him as a musical improv podcast. Um, we only had we only had about seven fans, but it was really fun. And then um, Constance went on on Anna Ferris unqualified, and then he had the idea for us to do because we were I was a new parent, and. Well, he saw us on social media. We were hiking. Oh, right. We were hiking together, and it was one of those things where he said, oh, my God, you guys are friends. Uh, you should be on a show together because you're both so great and you're both so funny. And we said, oh, thanks so much. What kind of show? <laughs> and he was like, no, a podcast. I think you guys should come up with something that you want to talk about. What do you guys want to talk about? And mm -hmm. so Missy and I were always hiking and bitching about how hard it is to be a parent and how nobody talks about how hard it is to be a parent. Yeah. And that was kind of how it came about. It's really true that there's nothing more diametrically opposed, something that you love the most you've ever loved thing. Right. And it's the the hardest, far the hardest thing ever. And it all and it just happens so fast. Yes. All of a sudden, you know, you go from being a person without a child. Yeah. You have a child, and and nothing is ever the same again. And it's you know, just constant, da, 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 da. and then you come up for air, and they're four years old, and you're like, how did that happen? But you know exactly how that happened. Four for you, Missy, and 11 for 11, you, yeah. yeah. And, Not uh, 11 kids, but an 11-year-old. No, no. 11 year old. <laughs> that would be, it's I wouldn't so be here. No, I wouldn't no, be you're here. The, you're the queen of svelte. We, had, we in no way <laughs> felt you had 11 children. I do remember getting home that day with my first child, though, and I don't know if you had this thinking, shouldn't there have been some licensing involved here? Or shouldn't I, shouldn't somebody have stepped in? and? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's checked me out because I'm alone. That's now that, at the house, right? Like, and like that's there. There's a, one of my favorite lines from Parenthood. That movie with Steve Martin. They talk about how you have to have a license to drive a car, but you don't have to have mm. a license no. to be a parent. And you know, it's that that driving them home in the in the seat, and you and think everybody is going to hit you, <laughs> right. and you right. can't see them, and you're like, they just gave me this pile of flesh that yeah. has a yeah. heartbeat. That and they're like, here, good luck. And you are exponentially <laughs> you more vulnerable for the lo as long as you Forever. live on this planet. Forever. Uh, Forever. It always blew my mind where I thought, boy, you talk about, you know, if you're out there and you imagine yourself to be egomaniacal, egocentric, egotistical, and you want to get yourself off yourself, 
I'm a kid because you're so pale, or at least to me and I think no, most yeah. parents, you pale in the overview when you think about your kid. Which is, I do think, the greatest thing about having a kid is you, it's not all about you anymore because I think we are all so much about ourselves, especially through adolescence and sometimes even mm -hmm. much further than that and longer than that. Mm -hmm. So it is the greatest thing that it takes it off of you, but then it's, and then, but then it's all on you. Yes, you know. There's really a serious, uh, uh, horribly, horribly uh, threatening part of parenting when the child's in trouble or something. And I often wonder. I like that you have an anonymous confession line where yes. people might call up. Have everybody can call up and say, "I put them in a lime green day go suit, and we went to a pool party. Everybody else was, you know, and that's right. sort of funny stuff." But. There's the serious stuff, and I like that you have an anonymous confession line. Are you getting good stuff off that? Is it serving the podcast? Well, yeah, absolutely. I think people just, just to be able to say, you know, I did this thing. And, and it's for us, obviously, when we first started this, I was a little terrified because it was like people, the parenting mm -hmm. community is relatively judgmental, and there's this idea of, and there's so many different ideas of how you're supposed to do something. So the idea that you can come in and, I mean, I would like to be on, I'd like to change my voice to be on our anonymous confession. I'm sure we could do it. We do a lot of great accents on our show, so That's true. I'm sure you could pull it off. like the person who's like my brother was. <laughs> She'd know that in a second. I would know. I'd have to. Well, the good thing is the podcast, so I could show it on my face, but just not hear it in my voice. I think it's who's been, this caller? That's right. Oh my gosh, that's a crazy accent. See, Let you could do that. It. I'll do that. It's good. I I like it because it allows us to then talk about topics that might not have come up yet on our show mm -hmm. and some of them are very funny and some of them are um, dark yeah. but I like I kind of like the darkness a little bit because I do think we all need to just get stuff off our chest um, you don't want to I don't know, you walk around with it whether you believe it or not. You gotta just let it go. I don't know if you've been in therapy in your life, but I have, and I, I always love <laughs> I mean, that moment where uh, you go in and you, you, you had a dream or something and you look at your shrink and you say, I, I, this, this freaked me out a lot. You tell him to dream and he'll look, it, the best moment in the world is when he looks and he goes, my 930 has not. <laughs> and you're thinking it's the it's the human experience. All of a sudden, you're part of the collective, and you think, God, yeah. I'm not as odd as I thought. Well, I remember going to Disneyland with my daughter, um, and she was having a you know just her crying like I want to get into this troll or this. So just the little things like the transitions were hard, like moving her, putting clothes on her, and I saw like 20 other kids mm -hmm. having the exact same reaction, and it made me feel so much better. Because I was like, oh, this, is, this isn't just me. This is yeah. everybody. The stuff of life right there, right in front of you. All right, when we come back, Constance and Missy fill me in on their Lives Beyond the podcast, plus how parenting styles have changed, what they want parents to get from their podcast, all that and much, much more. Stay right there. Larry King now. Hey, folks, welcome back to Larry King now. Dennis Miller. <laughs> Hey everybody! <laughs> Some sort of shoulder shirt acting thing moved into the room. <laughs> mm. I'm filling in for Larry. My guests are actress Missy Powell and Constance Zimmer. They are delightful. We're talking about uh, the Motherload, which is their new podcast. Um, now, tell me about the rest of the format of the podcast. We, uh, I, I love the idea of the anonymous confession line. And what do you do then? Just take. Uh, I guess it's tough to take phone calls on podcasts. What do you do then? Um, well, we tend to comment on the confessions as well, but we have, a, you know, every episode is either based on like the celebrity parent or the expert that's coming on. We'll pick a topic. Mm -hmm. um, mostly it's about trying to get people to talk about the things they wish they knew before they had kids. Mm -hmm. um, and then like their biggest bits of advice or uh, things they've found out along the way that aren't in books that they'd like to share. So giving people a space really, whether they're an expert or they're Mm -hmm. just a parent, you know, just, um, is um, a place where we can all learn from each other, like our mistakes as well, and mm -hmm. to not be afraid to say, this was a mistake, but I did it, I learned from it, and now I'd like to give it to you as a gem. Yes. Um, and then, so it's just, it's very casual. You know what, I think a main thing a mother would have to do, and I want to see if you agree, you, you have to, I think the more people know they can hurt you online about something more substantive, the more brutal they'll get and mummy shaming mummy shaming I don't want to make it an infantile thing it's brutal out there and I, I see pit things all the time where people are just having fun with their kids and 
people wade in to brutalize them and make them feel they're bad. I think it's almost important to stay offline if you're going to be a mother with pictures of you and endeavors with your children. What do you think? I think it's a very hard time right now with social media and Instagram and uh, the infiltration of technology just already in schools, whether you want your kids to be on it or not, because mm -hmm. they're using iPads and they're using Google searches to look things up yeah, and all this kind to, of stuff. So they have to, so they're not but... Right, and so you want them to be uh, technologically aware yes. of how to use all that stuff and navigate it, but yeah, it's very hard what you want to share. It's the biggest but. It's a but where you should shout it midway through the sentence. Yes. But. But. Well, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, it was one kid who wanted to beat my ass for my lunch money. Now the bullies are anonymous uh, by the tens of thousands, and when they smell blood in the water, there's a feeding frenzy on your your precious child. I, I don't. It's even really know. yeah. I mean, it's uh, you know, my daughter's four, and it's it's. You know, this isn't really the question, but the idea of like how much media do you mm -hmm, even for sure. put in front of them, and like the idea of I want I want to watch something, I want to play with your phone, I want to do this, and we don't really. It's such a different world. I didn't grow up with anything like that, so there's that kind of thing, and then there's also like for me, um, even doing this with her, I thought because I adopted my daughter from birth and uh, had a, you know a really hard time having children, and mm -hmm. so there are a you know there's a she has a. a biological family that's out there. It's an open adoption and it's something that I was like, I just don't, it's, 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 is worrisome. Like how much do you put yourself out there? You know, like for other people to, you know, comment on or like there's this idea of like, we want it to be um, obviously successful and we want to be able to help or help people, give people um, a place where they can, you know, they can come and they can share their stories. They can laugh, they can, bitch a little bit, um, they maybe can learn something, but the idea too is like, how will we be judged by that? You know, because we are putting mm -hmm. ourselves out there. And You know, we all have choices and there are obviously easier things that you can deal with with the family and what you have. And what we're trying to do is not judge people's choices, but to give you all the options and say, there are options for helping you get through all of it. If we all come together as a community and talk about it, People don't talk about their struggles with parenting. Everybody's trying to give this show that we're all doing it right and we're all perfect and look at my pictures and no, they're not filtered. They're great, we're great, everything's great. And it's like, it's okay to admit that it's hard and it's okay to admit that there's struggles and there's concerns and there's issues with everything from social media to phones to potty training. Mm -hmm. And you know, the fact that Missy's is four and mine is 11, it's great because we wanna be able to across all of those timelines um, and not just focus on yeah. the, this age. Because 11, I'm getting into, you know, teenage trauma. Now, there's praise helicopter parenting. Obviously, that's something that is, uh, I mean, I think is detrimental. Obviously, I have an opinion about that. But the, you know, you have this amount of time with your kid and then all of a sudden your kid's going to start going to school if, mm -hmm. unless you homeschool your child. or, um, And then your influence, you can, is... There's that time when it's going to be other people who are influencing your kid. And I'm in that place now where my daughter goes to school for, you know, three or four hours a day and comes home with all kinds of different ideas. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That is scary. I will say, I mean, she does try out a lot of things. Like the 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 thing that I and I love it is, you know, she'll be like, Don't touch my body. I mean, that's something that they tell each other at school, like, don't touch my body, but she takes it, you know. Right. And you're like, well, I She's can, sitting on right. my lap and be like, Don't touch my body. And I'm like, Well, <laughs> That is tricky. Now you just pointed out the the amazing right. conundrum that is parenting. Yeah. Of course, that's a thing you'd like to lay down for their safety, but they're kids. They're they're uh -huh. smart, but they're not wise. Exactly. And they, they just exactly. transpose it over to you. And a friend of mine said something that was so simple and so smart. She said, "Kids don't listen; they copy." Mm -hmm. And then I was like, "Oh." That's actually so true. It's not that I've maybe said these things to her, but she's just seen somebody else mm -hmm. do it or seen me do it or her dad or whatever. And that's also just a thing that I'm like, oh God, now I have to be aware of all of my actions all the time, yes. right? They're educated really charmers. We get to know Missy and Constance after this with a round of If You Only Knew. We'll throw some of our favorite questions at them, get to know them a little better, check out their podcast, The Mother Love. Stay right there. Larry King now.
Welcome back to Larry King Now. I'm Dennis Miller filling in for Larry, having a blast during the break. Uh, we like to play a game here called If You Only Knew, some quick answers to some short questions. What keeps you up at night? Wow, uh, I, well, what keeps me up at night? The state of the world. Yeah. I know. Climate I mean, change. Yeah. Mm hmm Elections. For me, it's that I've been parenting all day and I have like that, once they go to sleep, it's like you have two hours to be a parent. I mean, a, a human being, what? like an adult. <laughs> And, I'm, and I kind of am just like <laughs> savoring the wow. two hours. Luxury you cannot live without. Oh, lip gloss. Of course. Me too. I, go, I really don't like having dry lips. So that could even be chapstick. I don't care what it is, but I'm a big fan of Right, so you're a multi-tiered lip gloss. Girl. I like a hot, a hot tub. Yeah. I have a hot tub. I always put in a hot tub wherever I live. Food I know. you can't stand. Liver. I've never had it. Oh. I don't even know what it's like. I've had pot to oh. but I guess that's liver, but... No, it's not the same. Just liver with, like, grilled onions on top? Mm. Disgusting. Like a, a superpower you wish you had? Uh, to be I'm invisible. invisible. Oh! oh. We did the but tandem it thing. Be the best. Yes. Be a, or fly. Doors. I'm gonna go with fly. Well, that's a big difference. I know. You can get on my back, and I'll take. I'll, I'll fly you. There you and go. You um, proudest accomplishment. Missy, you first. I think my kid. Yeah. Yeah. You can say the same, right? We mm. talk about a mother podcast. True. I would say that my child is healthy, uh, of healthy, sound body and mind. There you go. What, what more? Listen, that's pulling Mine the sword from the stone. healthy body. Healthy body. <laughs> Oftentimes. <laughs> Occasionally a sound mind. You're stranded on a deserted island. Literally. What three things would you like to have with you? Well, let's do both of you. Missy, you first. Um, a lot of sparkling water. Mm -hmm. um, Why sparkling? Tar? Why not just flat? Because I, I'm on the island, I get to choose it. But you, you know, open it up, it's going to go flat when you open it. Listen, you're, al uh, you're alone on a desert island, your entire life's flat. It's <laughs> true. You've got to have something bubbly. <laughs> Sure. I'd be shaking it up and yep. shooting. So there's two. A Your guitar. guitar. And a boat. Can I have a boat? Bingo. Now, I can get off a boat. Wow, that was really smart. Thanks. Why did a, a plane? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like a plane on my a runway. Exactly. And you could never get off on a, on a plane. You'd have to have, like, you know what I mean? You didn't you'd need it unless. True. You can't get off the island with your plane. <laughs> we've, gone from, we've gone from pragmatic to magical to pragmatic again. So I would say a. Um, Swiss Army knife. Yeah. Oh, that's a good shoot. Well, I'll be in my boat. <laughs> you and your, it. you have your bubbly water in your boat, and you're <laughs> sorry. You'll be fine. Guilty pleasure, either food or TV or, uh, you know, something you're streaming. A guilty pleasure. I'm, I, I'm pleasuring Succession. I'm really enjoying that TV show. Eating s'mores on a daily basis. Do you eat s'mores every day? I love marshmallows. Do you have like one of those little makers? I do. No, not a maker. I just put it over my gas flame. I just do, I, and I have like those little marshmallow twirlers where you just sure you twirl do. it with your thumb. Yeah. Coming up, Missy and Constance will both be back to answer some of your social media questions. They're podcasts, and they're a delight, aren't they? The Mother Load. You should check it out, and uh, you can find it. Is there a specific uh, salt lick they can go to, or is it at anywhere you can get podcasts? Or where do you like to send Apple Podcasts. Apple, Apple, Apple Podcasts. No. But I believe the there's other places as well, wherever. Yeah, but you can get those nice reviews on Apple, and I think it helps you, like five stars and that. Well, uh, I'm going to listen to it and I have a feeling I'll be five starring it. We'll be right back right <laughs> after this. <laughs> Welcome back to Larry King Now. I'm Dennis Miller, host, Twitterer. <laughs> yeah. Filling in for Larry, my guests are actress Missy Powell and Constance Zimmer. When they said you were going to be on, you lit up the social media and your fans have questions for you. May I act as an interlocutor with a few of these Please, ladies. interlocutor away. <laughs> this is from Dougal Pollux. Dougal Pollux asks both of you, how did you each get started in showbiz? Mm. Missy, you first. I was in drama school, and I mean, all of the plays in high school went to North Carolina School of the Arts for drama, and then we had like a showcase with after, and I got an mm -hmm. agent. And were you a singer, hoofer, as actress? As a, a singer, did, no hoofing. I'm, I, I'm a, my hoofs don't work very well, but I do sing. I did. I started acting, and I moved to New York, and got an agent. Started auditioning for everything, and I rollerbladed around the city. 
Constance, how'd you get in, started? How did I get started? Um, I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, which was here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, even though I tried to get into every school in New York, but I, I had such an ego, uh, I didn't prepare. <laughs> so anyways, I didn't get to do the New York even though I wanted to, and then I just started auditioning and uh, worked with Stella Adler for a couple of years while she was alive, and that was pretty extraordinary. Did she have good Brando yeah. stories? She had amazing stories, yeah. I'm a Brando yeah. nut. Well, and I, and so, her brain. well, and I went to school with uh, Benicio Del Toro mm -hmm. and Salma Hayek, and, um, you know, learning through them as they were just starting out, too. So, and then just auditioned my butt off. All right, next we have Ron uh, 11366, which I think was George Lucas's student film, <laughs> USC, if I'm not mistaken. On Twitter, he asked Constance, whatever happened to Penny Barnes Barrington from Aww. Good Morning Miami? See, they do. The yeah, they care. Fans, I yeah? love that they care. Good Morning Miami was the first... Uh, show I was on as a series regular, and it was the creators of Will and Grace, mm -hmm. um, Max Muchnick. Muchnick and, and Puchnick. Yeah. They used to write for me when they were kids. <laughs> oh, yeah? They were always sneaking out in the afternoon. I had a variety show. They were going on auditions. Once that one day they weren't there. I said, Where'd Muchnick and Puchnick go? They, they sold a show called Will and Grace. Yeah. And history they're happens. They're gone. They're amazing. Yeah. And yeah, so that was, kids that kids was Good Morning right. Miami. And where is Penny Barnes today? Uh, you know, I don't know. I think what, she's probably was she probably still playing? I was like um, a skater chick, sure. uh, you know, tomboy skater chick in love with the, it was behind the scenes of... Roller skating. Yeah, roller skating. Going between the orange cones with that amazing dexterity, yeah. that guy in the two it. short shorts in Central Park always did. It was, right? That's, maybe that's what she's doing. That's actually, I would like that for her. <laughs> she's sure. transitioned into the guy in the park going she's between the She's in that, like... Uh -huh. There you go, it happens. In that, um, 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 Jennifer Frank on the Larry King Now blog asked, Missy, oh. would you ever consider bringing back Smith and Pyle? Do you still talk to Shawnee? Aww. So I had this band called Smith and Pyle with Shawnee Smith. Oh, she is a very t talented uh, lady and real. Like, she was alpha. She was the one mm -hmm. who was like, let's do this. And I'd written a few comedy songs, and she had some more serious ones, and we made this band. And we did, like, one tour. We made an album. <laughs> it was really fun. I think I drank a lot of moonshine because we were in <laughs> West Virginia, which one does when you're in West Virginia. It was a lot of fun. And yes, we've talked about getting back together, like to maybe do, again, like something on the internet, like to go do a show that we do live on Instagram mm -hmm. or something. Why don't you guys come on our podcast? Well, she lives in Missouri. Oh. So I could, I, we could go with our microphones. Mm -hmm. You know, Missouri's like a desert island. You can't fly off of it. Of course she can come out and do it. Right, she should. She's a mom. Are you gonna? Uh, She's I'll a mom. Send her my boat from my. That's right. From your desert. From your <laughs> desert the previous island. question. Yeah. I, I, I bet you it's a hell of a podcast, and I'm gonna give it a tumble now because you remain a parent forever, folks. It's like being a jarhead in the Marines. You're in, and you're in for good, and you always need help. I thank my <laughs> guest, Missy Powell, true, yeah. Constant Zimmer. You can hear them talk about all things parenting on their new podcast, The Mother Load. It's available wherever you get your podcasts. And a little plug, I have one too called my uh, Dennis Miller Option. And it's on Westwood One and iTunes. And we will see you next time. And ladies, nice to meet you. So nice to meet you.